Who wants the first question? Ira. Hey, Kenny. Um, the slow starts, uh, is there any, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of different little small things that lead to it, but is there any big picture reasons that you can point to? I mean, I really couldn't point. Every game has really been a different reason. Uh, I mean, to be honest, the first game, Notre Dame came out in something completely different. And uh, to be honest, that was on us as a, myself. Uh, uh, second game, obviously, we came out and we penalty, right? The third game, we came out and we turned the football over. And uh, this week we came out and uh, with two one-on-one -on -one situations that we just really the first three plays, you know, three different one-on-one -on -one situations where we where we didn't uh, didn't have success and uh, have to punt. So I mean, I think for us, uh, obviously we have to get started faster. That's never been a problem for the last nine years for us is to start fast. I mean, if you look at our first drives dating back to Arizona State in 2012. We've been probably one of the best in the country. So we've got to reevaluate uh, with our current personnel uh, what we're doing in those drives and, and try to help our guys get started. Uh, what that looks like, that obviously depends on the defense we play. Up front, Chris. Kenny, with consistent offensive struggles, do you guys have to weigh trying to sustain drives versus simply trying to set up chunk plays and execute those and get points via that way? Yeah, I mean, that's that's it's a great question. It's the great balance. You know, there was a drive in there where we had a 12 play, you know, 54, 52 play drive down the field and basically called the same play because RPO based and uh, really didn't have a defensive structural response to that. And it's hard to create a, a, uh, a defensive scheme change mid drive and uh, go all the way down the field and we MA on a play that we've run seven times prior on the same drive, TFL second and 14. And now we're putting that long yard situation. So it, it is that balance of, it goes back to, we either gotta be explosive or be consistent. And even when we were, are consistent right now, I don't know, I've now told our guys, I've never been around 450 yards of offense with two penalties and really no turnovers and 23 points. I mean, you just put those numbers together and try to process it, and the math just doesn't add up right. And it's because we have that success, we have that success, and then one play on one drive. And that's what I showed our guys yesterday. I showed the 14 drives we had, and I just showed one play on every drive. And I said, this is the play. All the other plays don't matter. Right, this play right here, second and 14. This play right here, second and 16. Drives over. Right, We're, we're not at a, at a stage where we're going to be able to overcome those on a consistent basis. So uh, we got to find that balance, of, and that's throughout the game, of are we going to be aggressive and try to get those explosive plays? But then if we take those explosive plays, are we going to get negatives on them, which, you know, are the same problem you get to second and long. So we got to... We got to figure out are we going to be explosive or are we going to be consistent? And right now, our our success has been explosive. Uh, that's been something that was a little bit, somewhat of a positive. Is we are having some explosive plays in the running game. We have had a few one play drives in the passing game, right? But we haven't been, I wouldn't say explosive. We just had one or two explosive plays throughout a game. There hasn't been seven or eight, which you need if you're not going to be consistent. We're kind of stuck in that middle ground, which I say you can't be stuck in offensively. You got to be one or the other or both if you want to be really good. Corey? After the game, uh, McKenzie put some of the blame on himself uh, for the sacks and maybe not seeing things downfield. Uh, how, how did he play overall? And were some of those sacks maybe him holding on to the ball a little too long or not moving up? Whatever, whatever it was. Was he right in his assessment and blaming himself on? Well, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you know, I coach, I coach him. So whatever he puts on the film is a reflection of me. Uh, and I got to do a better job uh, with him, just creating some consistency in the drop, consistency in his eyes, uh, to be more confident, obviously being year one in a system and not having a lot of reps in fall camp, uh, you know, due to unforeseen circumstances. You know, things are, things are happening out there sometimes for the first time for him within this scheme, right? So I got to do a better job putting him in, in positions to feel comfortable and uh, letting him be the playmaker that he's shown to be. The two-minute drive um, seemed like, you know, maybe going tempo got, seemed to get him going a little bit maybe. Is that something that you can look at more 
I know you can't run two minutes all the time, but I mean, is there things you can do tempo-wise to maybe help him get into a rhythm? No question. Uh, I mean, in the two-minute situation, we knew it's either going to be three double cloud, some sort of two tamper, or three double cloud, three three high defense, shell defense, or it was going to be man-to-man. -man. So we had, you know, three to four calls that we know were answer-alls to those. So it allowed us to play fast, and everything showed up exactly how we prepared. So there was a lot of confidence in that. Uh, being able to do that is something that we've struggled at in the past, playing with that tempo. If you look at when we've played with tempo, you know, this, this year and in the past, that's when a lot of our negatives have happened, whether it's mis-IDing something or somebody missing a signal or, or whatever that variation of, of reasons why we haven't had success. So I would like to say yes for him. He's always operated in this tempo world and he feels very, very comfortable going fast. Uh, but we have to make sure we are in those situations when we're going to get limited looks. And you get those limited looks in a two-minute drill when you know a defense is uh, usually going to be an A or B. Most teams don't have A, B, C, D, E in a two-minute situation. They hang their hat on one or the other. And when we can prepare our guys for one or the other, I do think we can play fast. It's when you, you know, on base downs, when you get A, B, C, D, E is when that tempo, if you're not all on the same page, can cause those TFLs. When you look at, uh, as a person in the media or a fan, you look at the numbers Jay Sean and Trey Sean have put up per play, you know, it's, people will ask, well, why can't you get them the ball more often? What, what are the challenges there and why can't they get maybe more touches? Well, I think we, we tried. I mean, we had, in the football game, there were 41 base down plays. And in the first half, you know, we had 20 plays leading up into the two minute drive. So you have four drives, you have 20 plays. Right, four of those are in a four to five of those are in a third down situation. So you really have 14 first down drives, first, first down plays to where base down so you can actually run the football opportunities in the first half. So we were really limited in the first half getting them touches. So in the second half, we said, golly, I mean, we gotta, we gotta force it. And in the second half, you know, we ended the game 41 base down calls, which means not second and long, not third and long, and not two minute drill. So take all those out, we had 41 plays, and we had 29 runs called. You know, when you look at that percentage, that's right around, that's a super, super aggressive mindset to get those guys' touches from a philosophy standpoint. Obviously, three of those were, were turned into an, R, an RPO bubble, bubble, so they were only handed 26 of the 40. But I would say 29 of, a, of, a, of the 41, one of them was a penalty. So 29 of the 40 being run calls is is pretty significant uh, when you're looking at how to get those guys the ball. But to your point, we got to give them the ball more. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Those guys are productive. What we thought was going to be enough this last week isn't. We got to get them it more and more, and we got to get it, get them the ball more creative ways, creating more unbalanced like Ward's tackle over run where the defense didn't align right, and we ran to an open D gap because there's just nobody in the gap because we flipped the tackle over. We got to do more of that stuff where we try to create confusion and hand those guys the football, uh, good hat count, bad hat count, it doesn't matter, right? The scheme is really out of it. It's hand those guys the ball, good numbers, bad numbers, or indifferent numbers, and let those guys make plays. Kenny, I want to ask you about uh, two specific plays. First, I think it was in the first half, you would run the play where Pokey's going in motion, and it's, a, it's usually a run off that, and you were doing well with it. And it felt like you set up that pass to Cam McDonald. Like, it, you, it, same, same formation, same look. How good a play is it by that safety to even notice that, to, to, to run with McDonald? And did you think that was going to be a huge play when you called it? Because, I, you know, I did. I can't believe he noticed that McDonald was running around and ran with him. Well, we actually got the signal wrong. A lot. We were aligned backwards with the running back. So it allowed the uh, safety to see the mesh. So he allowed to see the quarterback pull the football out. And that's why the guy retraced. If we would have been aligned correctly, probably would have been a touchdown. Uh, Unfortunately. Sorry to bring that up for you then, man. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the last play to, to Parchment. Um, is that what you want McKenzie doing there? It's one on one with, with a guy that's, you know, pretty proven as a college receiver. Is that the play to make right there? And is it just a matter of, you know, sometimes your guy has to go make a play? Oh, I mean, 100%. I mean, at the end of the day, you get into a two minute throw with 30 seconds left and you got to score a touchdown and you're facing a, a three shell defense. You're going to only get one-on-ones. That's at the end. Of, I mean, that's that's what you're trying to find. You're trying to find the one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, throughout that drive, he was throwing burst seven cuts, post corners uh, to parchment into the boundary on a lot of those two-minute situations because that was the one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, we felt like 
giving them a chance to take the top off and have a one-on-one -on -one situation to essentially, you know, put us in position to tie the football game uh, if we get a two-point conversion. And their guy made a their guy made a play, and that's the game. I mean, that's that's football. Is it eventually comes down to one-on-ones and uh, offensively. You know, with, with us moving the ball like we did, we should have never put ourselves in that situation. We should have been able to be more efficient. We should have been able to capitalize earlier in the game so we didn't get to that situation. Some of the big runs you guys have schemed up, but, but Jay Sean's had some pretty spectacular runs. Um, it's maybe getting lost a little bit in the season you guys are having, but, but how well is he playing at running back? Unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. I and mean, that's a guy is you can see his speed on the field. You know, he's deceptively fast. You know, you don't look at him and say that's a that's a guy who's going to run away from people, but he does. Um, and he's done a I mean, look at the run he had, bursting, cutting the inside shoulder, the safety at the second level. You know, those are what create explosive plays. You know, he's making one guy miss. And that's whether you're a running back, whether you're a wide out winning you're a one on one, whether you're an offensive tackle, uh, Jay Sean's consistently made his one guy miss. And that's why he's had those explosive plays. And uh, throughout all of college football, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see the guys who can make their one guy miss or not get covered by their one guy or win their one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to see those guys have success and be explosive. And you're going to see the guys who don't, those offenses have to be extremely consistent. So having a guy like Jay Sean uh, has been critical for us in creating those explosive runs. And uh, that's why his yards per carry is so, so high because he's had, I believe, two 75-yard runs. Uh, which can drastically change the, uh, what is it, the mean versus the median and the mode or whatever those fancy words are, right? Those are all uh, pretty drastic when you have two 75-yard runs. Kenny, you said last week, you know, people want to see change, but for you the recipe is hard work. How do you find kind of a balance of, of obviously believing what you're doing, this team believes in what you guys are doing, but having to do something different to get better results so that everybody does stay all in? Well, from a, from a philosophy standpoint, the only thing you can do is work. There's not like a, a secret button, oh, if we go out 10 minutes earlier to pregame, then we'll start fast. Like, no. That's, that's, there's no secret button you just pressed to all of a sudden start fast, right? There's no secret button to have a, a good first set, right? So from that type of stuff, right, it's about the work. You show up, you go to work, you continue to get better. And through all the negative, I freaking hate losing. I've never lost early in my life, right? This just doesn't, I've never been a part of it, right? However, okay, that's the situation we're in. And through all of it, you got to find the good. We had two penalties. We had no turnovers. We had 450 yards. But at the end of the day, we're not scoring, right? Why, right? Same things. One negative play, second and 13, right? We got to put it all together. That's it. We just got to put it all together. We've had games where we've been in third and short all the time. And then we went 0 for 7 on third and short. <laughs> We've had games where, like last week, we were in third and long all the time. We, couldn't, we had no success. But third and short, we were really good. Right? We just got to put it all together. We got to have one game where we don't get penalties, we don't turn the ball over, and we don't take negatives. And if we can do that, we can put it all together and be really successful. But until we put all the pieces together, which we've shown we can do and we've shown we can't, right, we're going to continue to struggle. And that's the challenge. And from a, a scheme standpoint, uh, we're obviously always going to adapt to the scheme, but scheme is player driven. So back to a previous question, we got to find ways to get, you know, some of our backs the ball in more creative ways, uh, like we did this last week. But we may have to force that a little more than uh, than we have in years past from a number hat count perspective. Uh, the scheme may have to go out the window a little bit, and the uh, players uh, rise up from uh, how we're going to get them the football. On, on some of the guys that uh, haven't won one-on-ones consistently yet in games, have you seen them do it in practice, or is it a matter of trying to find other guys? No, we've seen them do it in practice. Uh, and then at the same time, I mean, the, we got to find ways as a staff to help our guys be successful. I mean, I, I know that's not like a fun answer, but the guys are the guys, and I, I'm blessed to be able to be here and coach these guys. I. I really do love coaching these guys. Like they come to work. We're down, what, 31 to seven, and we find a way to battle back. I mean, we still lose, it's unacceptable, but there's no quit. And the guys are fighting and they're working and they're working. And I don't know when it's gonna click. I can't tell you when it's gonna click, but we are getting better. There's improvement. 
They're, they're taking the coaching. They're taking, the, they're taking what we're saying, owning the football, not getting penalties, keeping our hands inside, playing hard, never quitting, right? But it's just not all, everything's not clicking at the same time. It's here or here or here or here or here. There's one thing stopping us. So I think for our guys, right, we've got to continue to work and we've got to continue to believe. We've got to continue to fight. And eventually it's going to click. And I do believe when it clicks, it's going to click. It's not just going to be a flash in the pan. I think when it clicks, it's all going to make sense. And then they're going to understand how to win. Because that's, that's what we're struggling with right now is understanding how to win. It's just the winning aspect. Because we've been in three football games uh, that we could have won all three. We just haven't won. We've got to learn how to win. And then Syracuse uh, statistically has played well defensively this year. What, what, what do they do uh, particularly well? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're a really, really good defense. They stop the run. They load the box. They stop the run. They're not scared to play cover zero on any snap. Uh, they're, they pressure five or six-man pressures. There are some games they do it 55% of the snaps is a five or six-man pressure, essentially leaving cover zero or really tight man-free coverage out on the edge. I mean, this is a guy who wants to cause chaos. I mean, it's the same defensive coordinator who called the game at Arizona State in the bowl game, Arizona State versus Florida State. It's the same defensive coordinator who was the interim DC at Arizona State. Uh, and he does a good job, Rocky Long Disciple. And uh, anybody who knows the Rocky Long Disciple and the Rocky Long Tree, they're not gonna let you run the football. They're gonna do everything they can in their power to make you throw the football. Uh, line stunts, everything's predicated off stopping the run and creating havoc. Thank you all.